Welcome back. I just watched a video where uh, Lily Lionmane had reviewed a game from the Turning to Master round one. I thought I'd give it a shot at trying to review the same game and just see, uh, heavily inspired by what she provided, uh, what insights maybe I have to offer as well. Um, Lily had introduced this game mentioning that this opening here is called Cheerful Central Rook. Uh, if I remember right from seeing Muranaka's video, uh, or perhaps I'm confusing this uh, with a different professional's video, um, that idea here is that um, obviously we're aiming to attack down the center file. Um, normally this would be a sort of opening that the second player would be preferring as modern engines and theory seem to suggest that uh, static rook is a very strong opening but um, you know I play central rook openings it's a lot of fun um, I do like that this uh, here Senta has control of this square so it's not as if uh, Gota is going to be able to prevent Senta from pushing the pawn to the center square and taking all this territory with it. Uh, one challenge here is that, of course, since uh, Gota is attacking down this flank, there's going to be lots of pressure around this these points. So uh, Senta will have to tread carefully. Hence, normally it's a little bit easier to play static rook than uh, this, but it's entirely a personal choice sort of thing. Um, there's some added challenge in doing things this way, and so perhaps there's profit from that. Um, one thing I've routinely done is I've had this tendency to block my rook. Obviously, this is only temporary, but we see that uh, here um, Gota is getting on with their attack very quickly. And so Sentas needs to be just careful that they know the theory. I unfortunately do not. I could drill down into the opening book to explore this a bit deeper. But here we see just Sentas blocked their rook. It's not totally clear what they're aiming for. And maybe Gota's deliberately not shuffling these pawns around as to avoid creating a target too soon that Senta could easily aim at. But Gota's also attacking down this flank, and so just Senta needs to tread carefully here. Let's see. Um, yeah, Senta does take this central space and prevents Gota from doing the same here. Meanwhile, uh, let's see, this is the construction known as Boat Castle. It can transpose to other stronger castles. Um, and I think Lily had remarked that this pawn advance, I think she called this a mistake. Uh, my own impression looking at it just from my own play is, yeah, that does feel like a mistake. It does seem like the thread got lo a little bit lost here. Um, it is nice to be building a castle and attacking at the same time. This is somewhat flexible, however, it runs the problem that now you've got two pawns blocking the bishop. And so you better... <laughs> I don't know. How do you make sure that your plan um, to attack something gets somewhere? I'm not sure. Um, so... I think there's this one concept that's called the Ibisha tax, where uh, so we see that like Senta is going to threaten something like this in the future. It's not uncommon f if you're playing static rook to have to push this pawn to prevent these kinds of future tactics from showing up. This could be opportunity to push that pawn, but I don't think I'd push that either. I'm not totally sure what I'd do, but I'm always a bit nervous to block my pieces, or to block my rook and bishop, um, just because I tend to get in trouble and I need tactical resources to bail me out quite frequently. But yeah, never fear. So um, they've managed to partially unblock the bishop, 
But really what this is saying is that the entire time they have been intending one very specific strategy um, known as the Yagura, the Fortress Castle. Uh, and now I guess I'm going to quiz myself on its construction. <laughs> uh, it's not a castle that I've played. Well, also, like, I think the idea with that castle is normally the bishop goes out this way. Or you have some other mechanism to get this bishop to go somewhere. That might not be so simple, given what Senta's done, where uh, we've got this influence pushing on here. So it's not so easy um, for uh, Gota to be able to unblock the bishop this way. But just to say, um, like, if you're building this for uh, the castle known as the fortress, like, say you're putting the silver here, gold, gold, and you'll tuck the king into the corner when you get a chance, or maybe you do the move order a lot differently. If you're building this very popular fortress um, and pushing these two pawns in order to be able to do that, then, um, well, again, I might be misstating what they're trying to do. They might have a different castle in mind altogether, maybe something like Millennium Castle, where they tuck the king back in the corner. Uh, I've got too many arrows going on here, but maybe there's a lot of different castles that they could be building. I don't know what what necessarily they're aiming for here, but they're pushing pawns, making it maybe easier for Senta to strike at some of these from the front. But one particularly famous uh, castle is the fortress, and you build it like this, I think, if I remember right. And it's designed to handle this attack from the rook from this side. Um, it's not necessarily intended to handle every possible attack, but maybe it's familiar, maybe you want to build it um, because you were most comfortable with it. I think Lily remarked that this did transpose into High Mino. So the Mino castle, just as a refresher, uh, you have all your generals connected in this shape. And then if you start getting attacked from the front, you could actually pivot this general forward. And then um, instead of generals being connected this way, they'd be connected this way. And so you'd have gold, silver, gold, and that's the high Mino shape. And uh, it's strong to attacks from the front, but again, it's not entirely clear that we've got a game of vertical shogi going on. Potentially, if this rook shifts over and attacks from this way, then we're going to be talking about horizontal shogi as uh, both players will be trying to attack the king from the side rather than from the front. And if the idea is to attack from the side, then building a high up castle might not be the answer for how to defend against that. Senta is pivoting here. Um, Sorry if I'm foreshadowing based on, again, having watched Lily's video and benefited from her analysis, as well as having seen some of the moves of the game and having some indication of what might be coming next. So, um, again, this is referred to often as the Ibisha tax, preventing Senta from being able to bring the bishop out. It doesn't need to be answered with a pawn move. In fact, the fact that you've not castled the king is starting to get a bit alarming. But maybe it'll turn out okay. We'll see. Um, yeah, it's good to have some sort of attack going and some sort of defense going. Uh, it's, I'm not following or understanding what uh, Senta's up to with all of these pawn moves. I mean, sure, I would push this pawn move. Sure, I would bring my silver out like this. And generally, the silver does end up moving to the center right there. Um, but, uh, and since uh, this attack has struck over this direction, it's entirely natural for this to be pointing like that since this pawn is advanced. So, like, Senta's not done a horrible thing here, but it's starting to drift a little bit. I'm not following what the next plan or next idea is. 
Maybe they're waiting to see what Gota is doing before they commit to some castle. I'm not sure, but building a castle is a pretty fundamental thing to do in an opening. And again, I'm just not really following what castle's being built. So I'm confused. Maybe you can explain it to me. I don't know. Um, frequently, as a beginner, I would take the opportunity to move my knights forward very early in the game to strike out and um, make my opponent really think about what's going on in the position. Um, I do like this knight move, though. I don't think this is a beginner move at all. Um, sure, it reminds me of my time, but again, the one thing that like Gota suffering a little bit from having done is from having pushed this pawn that blocks this bishop. This is not easy to resolve. And it makes sense for Gota to be striking out because like here this king is still not protected. So the timing of this is great. Uh, it's just a question of can you pull it off uh, without a bishop? You might be able to. Like it's not entirely clear. Um, again, I'm not totally following what's going on here. Here, uh, Santa proactively react, <laughs> proactively, I was going to say reacts to this, but they're trying to prevent, um, Gota from taking the knight forward again. I'm not sure that that's necessary. Like, can't we just move the king over? If the knight comes up, we just run away. Isn't that fine? Maybe there's something more to this. Um, maybe this has a latent threat that somehow if Senta gets another pawn... Well, already Goat has defended the head of the knight, so like a pawn drop on this square is not going to do anything because they just take this. So uh, I'm just not loving this blocking the bishop here. Uh, again, I'm not an opening expert. I've just largely watched Murnaka's videos, um, and I'm struggling to remember all the opening theory things, but being honest, yes. But anyhow, I think that um, it like there should be a castle starting to be built around like 10 moves ago. Uh, we have moved the king over. That's a good start. But much has to follow before you can build up a large attack and hope for it to succeed. But I guess this does, like, confine this knight. And this bishop is still confined, so it's still... Senta's probably fine here. Um, go to transitions from the idea of building Mino Castle, either to the Fortress or High Mino or some other castle like Millennium. Uh, I don't really know what Gota's aiming to do here, but they're building a castle. Uh, Senta plays a move that I frequently have played under many circumstances when my flank gets under heavy pressure. I'm not sure that this is heavy pressure, especially without the support of the bishop. But uh, So I would delay this. Uh, I guess this does have the benefit of controlling this square and this square. And if something absolutely crazy happens that um, the bishop itself is not hanging, but uh, the other possible intention of this might be to drop the rook back and over. And this is kind of a long shot, especially because you haven't castled yet. So I would probably delay advancing this gold unless there's something I'm missing. I would, again, continue trying to build a castle for Senta. But here, Gota strikes at uh, Senta's position. At, uh, in opening theory, uh, we're recommended to push this pawn and then only defend it when necessary to defend it. Here it is under attack, so defending it makes sense. Um, but I'm not totally... So again, like I would have left the gold back here, where it controls all the same squares as it control Well, most of the same squares. It, what you're trading off is defense of the rook. 
which is already defended a different way. Uh, you're opening up the back rank to allow the rook to move over. You might be intending something really aggressive with the gold, but I doubt it because you still haven't castled yet. But there were, wasn't a need to move this unless somehow something was hanging over here. Uh, you could have delayed this by one move. Um, so Gota's taken up the initiative. Senta reacts to it. And this, again, maybe it's a shot at building Millennium Castle. Um, could be attempting something much more aggressive, too. Just given... Um, so in Shogi, one thing you'd like to do is connect your pieces so they defend each other. Um... Okay, I'm seeing a really wild idea too. Like, what if you just drop the king back and the rook over and start pushing over here? What happens? Could that be fun? I don't think anyone would expect it, so I think it could be a lot of fun from that perspective. Maybe it's even effective, because, like, how do you stop that? Um, but I was about to remark that, like, one thing you like to do is have your generals defend each other. So, like, if this were defending this and this, or if this were defending twice, then if some crazy tactic blows open the whole board, you don't have all your pieces hanging. But let's look at what pieces are not defended here. So not defended, not defended. This is loose, loose. The king is defending these, but the king doesn't count. So of the non-pawn pieces, I've circled almost everything here. And then on this side, one, two three, four, um, five, six, seven. Not that these are easy to access. So from a loose pieces perspective, this is about even. Actually, that's defended by the rook. So from a loose pieces perspective, Senta is slightly better. Um, but Senta's king is... <laughs> kind of fighting for itself here. We see there are two generals nearby it. There's one that's gone off to go fight in the war up front here, and that's cool, but um, the king and rook are really close to each other, so I guess that's why I'm so nervous. Uh, again, this is a pretty normal position. It's not as if any player's done anything horribly wrong, but I'm just not following the thread, that's all. Um, yeah, earlier I remarked maybe advancing this gold is part of some more aggressive strategy. It looks like this is a continuation of that strategy. Note, however, this is still going to have to protect this point, else um, this is going to break through quickly. Um, but this is also defending this point, right? Isn't that an issue? Yeah, so... Um, Lily had remarked that what follows soon hereafter is a brilliant move. Um, but also Lily had noted, let me clear the markings, can I? I guess I could manually do this. Um, so Lily had noted that there was an opportunity here that Senta missed, even though Senta's not completed their castle. Like, I forget if it was here or maybe it was a move ago. Maybe both uh, both positions might present the same opportunity. That even though Senta hasn't castled, neither has Gota. Like both have approached considering building a castle. Gota's just like one move away from building a pretty serious, strong thing here. But they've not completed it yet. So I think it was around here at some point Lily was suggesting, based on her insights as well as, I think, fairy stockfish uh, shogi engine that had both suggested that like this attack on the flank is uh, seemingly imminent. I think she suggested it not here, but in the next position, though. So let's take a look at it like once this is defended. So, yeah, here... Gota has advanced both knights. Again, as a beginner, I would do that sort of thing all the time. Um, like, we're all playing this, we're all trying to learn this game together. It's a challenging game. 
And like there are many positions where this is a good move. Um, and it's, I don't think this is a bad move. I think like this does prepare something here that you could tuck the king away and build a castle. I think that's totally fine. And it looks, based on Senta's formation, like Gota's got time to do that. However, Lily did know, what about this? And then this actually starts to get really sharp. So I can remark that I think Mornaka had explained in a similar position that it's fairly normal to see this sort of thing. Or perhaps I'm conflating that with what somebody else had explained. I don't remember. Um, but yeah, here this shuts off activity on the flank. And since like Santa like has moved one silver out this way, the silver can't like just warp over to this point here. And since they spent time moving their other pieces, including moving the rook, this is again part of the opening strategy is to move the rook. Um, they haven't really got time to kick around this advanced bishop. And since the advanced bishop is not a target, it's escaped from the hell that it was stuck in not too long ago. And from up here, even if it does eventually get attacked, now it could actually retreat and then come out through the other flank. I mean, the knight's in the way, but we'll find a way to move it, right? So... This is fairly normal to bring this up. Um, it doesn't look aggressive, but like Willie was pointing out, I think based on fairy stockfish, this uh, does open the flank in a position that's pretty unstable for both players. So it's pretty spooky. Uh, could be a lot spookier. Like here, uh, Senta is fortunate that this covers um these points around the rook and the king otherwise uh threats to break this open could be pretty severe because you don't want to have the gold overloaded defending all this stuff and because well okay if silvers do get traded somehow there's always a shot to like drop a silver back here and that's really spooky you have to be concerned about that but um since there is no silver in hand and no silver is threatening to be exchanged at this instant, like, Senta does have things put together. This is a pretty unstable moment for both players. Anything could happen. Um, in a game of Shogi, if you're playing as Senta, you're usually playing to try to get some initiative or some pull or some attack. And this, um, I think, starts to... If they were to play this, this starts to recognize that um, polar initiative or attack, that potential here. Instead, uh, having advanced this gold up, Senta is um, defending. And Gota spots this edge flank thing and gets spooked and actually does defend this. This is flexible, like. Gota's got time to build a castle at this point, because Senta's just playing defense on this wing. They've moved this gold twice, the silver three times. Senta's building this solid center. But, um, we'll note, like, look at the influence here, right? You see, this is the extent, um, or let me put this a different way. This is what Senta is influencing. Um, this is what Gota is influencing. So, like, there's lots of things Gota's threatening here. So, Senta's building this tiny little box in the middle. Which, again, I've done before, mostly on Shogi Wars. Mostly just, don't hit me, I want to get out of the opening alive and build a castle and then we can have our game. But... Senta's fighting for a little space in the middle. Senta did take this point, and uh, they're contending for this stuff, and Gota's fighting back. But, um, yeah, now this... I don't like that Senta hasn't completed their castle yet, because it means that they can't open the position, and 
in contrast to this here, where I'm saying both players have not built a castle. Now this bishop actually starts to make up for the lack of a castle here. It defends backwards. So, um, and it's hard to target too, so this other shot on the flank is not there. So, Gota is actually somewhat more solid than Senta here. Senta either can't figure out how to attack or decides this is a good moment to continue castling. And either way, this is the right move, perhaps through an odd move order, but we got there. Um, yeah, Gota plays defense here. They've <laughs> Gota's advanced both of their knights. I could, I think it's fairly normal to bring this knight forward, although it's having done so gives away the opportunity to attack down this flank instead. But um, since they've advanced both their knights, it's difficult to move the bishop around. It's difficult to move the rook around. It makes sense for them to take some time and build a more solid castle and then try to hope for whatever comes next here. Um, Senta is stalling for time. Um, not sure what I would do. Lily did remark about how um, there's a possibility, I think, to attack down the right fourth file, which I think is fairly normal here, but... Um, yeah, also fairly normal is what Senta's trying to do, but we can observe that, okay, sure, yes, these generals protect each other, these protect each other. Uh, the bishop protects the rook, but, um, yeah, this is somewhat divided into, like, four or three different shapes here, and sure, Gota's got something similar going on, but they do have a really, really solid castle built here. Even if I'm not such a fan of the knight being brought forward here, because it slightly weakens the flank. Like, both kings are on the same flank, so that's fine. Um, if needed, this silver could go back to protect everything, but it... So, anyway, um, we've got, like, three different constellations here. And Senta's also got like three constellations. So there's, aside from this tiny little space advantage that doesn't really count because Gota's covered it up so well. Um, like here Gota's taken some space and Senta's covered it up, but they've used some fairly big pieces to do it. it looks even, but I don't think Senta's position is as flexible as Gota's position is here. Um... So, yeah, I think that's to say that, well, I mean, I guess this bishop has somewhat of a difficult time moving around, but it's not clear that it needs to move anyway. That's perfectly fine where it is. And it's pretty common um, for this to be something of concern in this opening. So, um, since I'll have to be careful about this. Yeah, Lily started to remark about how this is clever and brilliant and stuff like that. Um, so this is the one-two punch of I'm breaking open this file based on this piece having been overloaded. And uh, she remarked something that I thought was prescient here, so I'll repeat it a little bit. Um, she remarked that obviously... Uh, Senta can't just take this and then take back, right? Because uh, this would drop the bishop. And I agree, that would drop the bishop. Um, but uh, this isn't checkers, captures are not compulsory. And sure, it really sucks to give up a silver like that. And yeah, this probably is not great. But in some cases, if this attack down right next to your king ended up being pretty serious, you might have to consider variations like that. Like, even though here this probably doesn't work out, um, you might have to consider it anyway. Because there's a possibility of what if it does work out, right? Um, I don't really know. I've not run an engine against this or anything. And Like I said, this probably doesn't work out and probably doesn't matter, but it might... Um, 
But yeah, you could actually pursue the knight a separate way here. This again would suck to have to do, but it does slow down the attack toward the direction of your king. So if like this is a possibility, um, but yeah, point taken that the pawn sacrifice on this swing followed by this pawn exchange or sacrifice over here is a strong idea. It's um, yeah, this is a fairly stock um, kind of idea, and it's very resourceful and good to find. And the fact that Senta's not like taken the reins and attacked somewhere because it's not entirely clear how to attack. Um, that like here, Gota sees the day, and this is problematic, isn't it? Is there any other way that Senta could handle this? Um, I mean, so at the time they're moving the rook over, let's say that they saw this threat coming. Um, I guess a couple possibilities come to mind. Um, I don't know, like, what would be sensible? Like, I hate retreating the pieces feels awful to retreat the pieces but like putting something here to blunt the bishop um does happen quite frequently it's again unfortunate the gold has gone this route because it's not uncommon to have to do this or to have to bring the rook up or the rook was up and the gold goes around the rook like so the fact that like time has been spent advancing this this way and then it would approach this way is kind of inefficient but santa's got time for that um oh uh oh uh tip from having played lots of speed shogi games if you don't know how to attack like here it's not obvious how to break open gota's position um if you don't have a strong idea on how to attack in a position, consider, can I make a really solid castle and then attack later? Or does my opponent have some imminent threat that prevents me from building my castle? Here, the imminent threat is this fairly common push the pawn, and then, um, since this would get diverted, um, attack over here sort of thing. Like, being attacked on two fronts because you have one overworked piece is a common motif. So with that in mind, you might think, well, I don't have time to continue castling. But, no, like, in this opening, it's fairly common to have the gold end up around here. Where it protects the king in combination with the other generals. And in fact, if you had this gold over here instead, you'd have a really nice constellation going on. Yeah, it wouldn't be able to attack on this wing, but, like, Senta's not got an attack right now anyway. I'm not sure how Senta brings an attack here. Maybe you do Spearing the Sparrow, or if this rook somehow portaling over here somehow. I don't know. But, um, yeah. So this is, this idea is as strong as it is common, um, Gota finds it, of course, which is great. It's a wonderful idea. Senta decides to counterattack at this moment. Uh, I'll leave you to Lily's analysis uh, as to like what may have been better in these sorts of positions, because she took time and effort to analyze this in great detail. I'm just trying to give my impression on the game here, too. Um, retreating in shogi is a very painful thing to do. It's something many of us can relate to. And here, that's a retreating move. Um, yeah, temporarily things are fine, because we see the gold's got this covered, the rook's got this covered, so like, what could go wrong, right? But retreating is painful. Um, particularly if you, when you're retreating, you're blocked and don't have another avenue forward. So, yeah, 
I can understand that, like, you don't, you're not wanting to exchange bishops and then suddenly see a bishop show up in your camp. I get that. But does it logically follow that you want to retreat here? I guess this is the alternative that I'm not so subtly hinting at. I mean, so Senta has not built the strongest castle. And then based on being in that difficult situation to begin with, now they're having to figure out how to rebuff this attack while at the same time trying to conduct an attack that isn't even pointed at the king, unfortunately. Like, sure, if you could get a dragon up here, that would be delightful. You'd be attacking both wings and maybe even the rook. If you could get an open line for your rook, that'd be wonderful. Who wouldn't want that? But that's not where we're at. Uh, Senta's not made enough threats. And Gota sacked a pawn to get... Oh, well, they got the pawn back, in fact, didn't they? I can't count. Um, I see one pawn in hand and eight pawns on the board. So, um, yeah, material's actually even here. And Gota's continuing to attack. Yeah, they're attacking from the same side their king is on. Yeah, you could argue, doesn't this somehow create some weaknesses? And I think Lily showed that in some other variations it does. But anyway, these are just my random um, impressions as I'm coming up with them. This uh, hurts. <laughs> yeah, so this uh, demonstrates that Shogi and chess are not the same game. This drop ability can cause positions to swiftly change without warning. So, yeah, that's exciting. Um, what in the world can Senta possibly do against that? Now, as strong as that is, I mean, it's more common to drop a rank up in many positions and then threaten to move your general toward the king or toward some other pieces here or in support of something else. Here they're just straight up trying to win the knight. And you know, I actually this does threaten to help assist the bishop in promoting and then the bishop retreats and protects everything around its king. And I get that. But um yeah, if a pawn gets too far down the board, even if it promotes, its ability to attack, even as a promoted piece, is uh, worn down by the fact of it being on the back rank. It would have to, like, step back, and that takes a move. So, like, this threatens to win the knight, as opposed to, like, promoting the pawn, and then having the promoted pawn, like, threaten to come back here and then take that or something. Um, so the focus here is on material rather than on a breakthrough but it's kind of funny what happens next here um, so this blocks the bishop which was already blocked in the other dimension uh, Santa seems to have forgotten that this is out here um, Santa also Maybe I mean, losing a knight and a lance sucks. Especially if you're losing the lance and your rook is trapped, that would suck. So incentivizing the opponent to promote by taking the knight and then take the lance and then drop the lance here. Like, you're not wanting to give more reasons for them to take your lance in this sort of position. So I get that. But you've blocked your bishop twice, your rook is trapped. Yeah, your generals protect each other, these generals protect each other, but this is this is starting to get dicey, if we're not already dicey already. Um, on the other hand, because this, like, Senta maybe could have found some way to expel this bishop earlier, but now it's kind of a permanent resident. Um, so Senta's like, Okay, I'm done with this defending thing. I want to give my rook somewhere else to go. Uh, Santa's also threatening to take this, which would undermine support for the bishop. Um, Gota doesn't seem too concerned about that. 
don't understand this game anymore. <laughs> um, did Lily remark on this or not? I don't remember. So this uh, removes support for the bishop. Even knight takes, like, the knight would not support the bishop here. So this is, like, maybe one of Senta's better opportunities to try to confuse what's going on. And then threaten to drop a pawn to follow, and maybe some tactics might somehow work out favorably. Um, I don't know that this is even a great idea, but it's an idea. Uh, so... I do like having ideas. It's great uh, also from the perspective of now the rook is, can go even more places and make more threats. What will suck for Senta though is if this bishop promotes. And now you're talking about a horse and the horse can go back to defend the king. And it's not easy to sustain an attack with the horse protecting. So yeah, you've lost a lance here, and the lance could maybe threaten to take more pieces, and if the rook goes and gets involved in stuff, then maybe it's not defending this point anymore. So Senta has lost the thread, kind of whichever way you take it. Maybe they were throwing this in first. Gota sees their silver is hanging and like advances their silver. Senta sees that oh hey look that silver's hanging again um so yeah like senta's built up some initiative after all uh using one attacking piece and with a bishop that's kind of stuck and a knight that's blocked and lily remarked hey look we got this wonderful opportunity i think it was not even now but on the next move here, there's this wonderful opportunity to just break through with the rook, promote it, and then it's attacking at the base of the castle. And, you know, you don't really need a bishop at this point. Um, you just need pieces attacking. You've already got an extra piece to attack with this uh, lance. And while the threat's stronger than the execution and you're holding on to the lance because you don't know exactly where you want to drop it just yet, um... And while this knight is hanging, that's fine. While the bishop's threatening to be exchanged, you've got an advanced pawn. You could drop more advanced pawns in this vicinity someday and like start building a really spooky attack. Meanwhile, um, Gota's king is just like pretty safe. Um, the only thing that could make it more safe is if the knight were back here, but we've already past that point. Uh, I mean, yeah, this is another good idea, I think. Um, I don't know whether tactically it works out, but the idea that, hey, I... There's, well, we've only got two pawns in hand, but we're wanting to try to promote pawns on this file and on this file. Maybe it's greedy. Um... But yeah, Lily's point, I think, was that Fairy Stockfish had been recommending let's promote the Rook as soon as we can. And the Rook would be a very nice attacking piece, especially because uh, Senta would not be able to trap this Rook anymore. But now as it stands, like, Senta could like start pushing this, or drop the Knight in front or something, and it just gets very difficult for this Rook to do anything useful. And this rook could become a target much more easily than it can become an attacking piece. Um, Senta exchanges pieces uh, as does Gota. Um, Senta misses the opportunity here. So like, yeah, I get you want to promote this. You've been aiming all game from the beginning to promote the rook. Why the sudden change in heart? <laughs> Why would you, like, suddenly abandon this thing you've been planning all game? Well, um, so, uh, yeah, and at a moment where, like, the gold general here is hanging, too. 
why would you not immediately take the knight and like kick this rook well here's the thing um goto would like to be able to use this or use the rook somewhere um but at the moment there's some tactical considerations like um so namely if you could just like defend this somehow like i don't know bring this up or push the knight in front or even just push it and have it threaten to win the rook directly um these all could create challenges that the opponent has to figure out how to address um sure you might not end up getting your own rook promoted but like the opponent's having to suffer through the same problem um, but the other consideration is now you've actually got this bishop. And so if the opponent tries to prevent you from promoting, you can, like, sometimes drop a bishop back here or here, and that would somehow be just the piece that you need to liberate your rook again. So it's really tactically sharp stuff going on here, but, um, yeah, I think the tactics of this situation favor trying to cut off this rook and save your own gold it's complicated it doesn't help that the bishop's trapped it doesn't help that all your pieces are i mean the knight's not loose but there's some loose pieces going on here um none of these things help with um calculating more effectively uh but one thing even ignoring this promotion idea, I'm starting to get spooked by this threat and other pieces joining it. So maybe another idea might be to try to get this removed before this starts presenting problems too. I think a problem with my idea, however, like, Okay, yeah, they could take your gold, you take back. Sure, that could happen. That's not necessarily going to happen here. Um, but, uh, I mean, what was it here? Oh, yeah, here, even in that variation, this bishop is kind of exposed. There's all kinds of drops that can happen in this area. They're kind of difficult to deal with. Not even mentioning, like, this... Tokian advancing and then this and then you could like drop another pawn right there like yeah this is a strong strong attack at this point you don't even need your rook like this is a really good attack you might um yeah it might be dangerous going down two rooks in a night uh just for this kind of attack but um say that you don't like give up the rook for nothing you spend one turn just defending it um you don't need your rook in the attack at this point this attack is kind of almost self-sustaining it's not three or four pieces attacking but uh it's pretty strong so um so with that in mind that's why i'm like is there any way I could spook my opponent into retreating and then maybe I could like grovel and try to save this in a difficult, painful fashion? Um, can I like spook my opponent into retreating? Against a strong willed opponent, some drop like this is probably not going to work, but you're probably screwed in any event. Um, so. Maybe that's why they took up the gauntlet and just took the knight here. Even though they have a gold general hanging and a knight is not the same value as a general. But yeah, uh... <laughs> this is aggressive too. Um... So a second ago I was remarking, you know, you could just take a second to protect this. Yeah, you might end up losing it for some other piece. Um... Yeah, you don't want to have the rook and the king next to each other, but you don't here to save your rook, you don't have to put the rook and the king next to each other. Uh, the other idea Lily obviously suggested was this rook's a good attacking piece, let's use it. Um I think I agree with that too.
Oh, oh, I'm forgetting. Um, so part of the reason I'm like, other than the fact that I really like rooks and they're good defensive pieces and good attacking pieces, um, the other consideration is that this gold, that's not next to the king. That's not next to this king either. This gold is not the most valuable general. So, like, I would not be in a great hurry to take this. Um, it's not worth the same as a gold next to the king. It's not worth the same as a gold checkmating that king. There's, um, so it's better to save the rook in this case. Because this gold is not the most valuable gold, and this rook could be quite a monster very quickly, um, it's actually worth taking a turn to save it. Yeah, it does create some complications. Uh, I guess Senta could do this and like threaten to attack here, and they're threatening this. And you do need to respond a couple times. Um, I'm not sure how you respond to this. Maybe I stand corrected. Jeez. Yeah, I stand corrected. All right, whatever. But yeah, so much more of the impetus for... Let's just get out here. Uh, well, now this is hanging, isn't it? Hmm. Uh, Shogi's not simple. <laughs> Why is Shogi not simple? Um, was there any opportunity to do something more clever here? Oh, so there's this pawn drop winning the gold. Okay, or whatever. And then later they spent another turn taking a gold general. Um, I'm just going to make some random statement. Maybe it's true, maybe it's false. A tempo can have the same value as a silver general. And we know a silver and a gold are worth about the same. So if I were to say around this position, a tempo is worth a silver general, and we spent one tempo dropping a pawn, and then we spent another tempo taking a general. We've spent a tempo to take this, but also another tempo. We've like spent two generals to win one general, is my assertion there. Don't know if that's right. But just a random thought. And if you're saying that a tempo is worth the same thing as a silver, then, I mean, yeah, spending a tempo to take a pawn isn't compelling in itself. But spending a tempo to attack a gold and then another tempo to take it, like, sounds cool in the opening, in the early middle game. Sure, I get it. And the fact that this is so close-ish not really to the king i get it but yeah i like my rooks you can't get me to think otherwise unfortunately so yeah taking this promoting promoting greatly increases the value of the rook i don't know if it would attack down the bottom line actually maybe we better suited to attack down where this is at actually almost certainly it would so yeah, this would be quite a monster to deal with. Yeah, you're giving up a knight and an exchange, but this attack... I mean, you probably could even win the bishop if you figured out how to drop some piece somewhere around it. Um, I don't know. I would attack this way. The engine st fairy stockfish probably agrees, if I remember what Lily was saying. Here, instead, um, a rook is worth more than a silver. So, Gota saved one tempo by not, like, moving the rook out of danger. But they spent two tempi to take this gold general, which is distant from the king. And then Senta has this instant attack on Gota as a king. It's not supported by other pieces. It's not going to survive. It, uh, it's not going to persist on its own. But um, it is an attack. Um, and then Lily noted uh, this uh, Japanese term, Kobo. 
which I'm gonna joke we that Kobo just means bishop drop. It doesn't. But like every time you hear the word, it refers to an attacking and defensive move. And um that is a bishop drop, because the bishop is like the one piece you can drop easily to attack and defend. Sure, there are some situations where a rook could also attack and defend, but like we almost always hear it in this context. So it's resourceful. You got this threatening to remove um, uh, attacker that's near your own castle, but also threatening to smash your opponent's castle to bits unless they do something, which they do. Um, yeah, this cuts off the rook or a dragon. Uh, yeah, no, that's resourceful for sure. Oh, man, I was hoping we'd see something more exciting around here. So, here, yeah, this is just a pawn, it's a token. Okay, well, this, it sucks that the bishop's kind of trapped back here. It also sucks that it's not easy to continue this attack. Because if you were to take this, then they could... I don't know. Through diligent study, you could probably figure out like how successful this attack might be. I guess I'll leave that as an exercise for the viewer to figure out, like, you know, could you take the pawn, or could you, like, take the lance? Or do you, like, go over here so you don't hang the dragon to some dumb bishop fork thing? Um, is there some way that the dragon can approach the king and continue this attack? Uh, a long time ago we noted that uh, this high mino is good at it defending from the front. It um, counters all these points, but... A uh, more solid castle shape would be uh, just the normal Mino would be more solid for lateral attacks and defense. Um, so there's some opportunity to attack here, but it's without the support of like three other pieces. Um, you're trying to break a castle that's quite strong already. Um, yeah, I'd hope to see something like dragon takes pawn, threatening the king, and threaten this. Let's put it on the board. So this threatens the castle again, and threatens to take here, and this is threatening to take here too. And then after this takes here, I guess it's exerting influence over here or something. I don't know. But, like, I would want to take this one step further. My concern is that maybe there's some way... Um... I'm wanting to put a gold general next to this because I'm so nervous, but I, that just kind of kills Gota's attack. Um, yeah, I don't know. But this would be another attacking and defending move that would kind of call into question this pawn drop. And maybe there was some different defense that was missed, or maybe like we were trying to lure the dragon over here for some reason. I don't know. Anywho, uh, Senta split their castle, which is the beginning of the end. And the end of the end is not much air after, so... Oh, that's aggressive. Um, but the dragon's not attacking here, it's blocked by a pawn. This is aggressive, but now, yeah, the gold general is dropped, and this is just really solid. So you spent a turn to drop this. This exchange happens and you're having to spend a return to react to this. Or you get, you just sack against it and pray for the best, but uh, from a move order um, mindset, maybe this first. And then see what they can come up with to defend against the dragon. Like, say they do some no nothing move here and you end up with the same sequence. Say that I don't know why you would have the same sequence. You probably wouldn't, but uh, against this, now suddenly you have other. You don't have a silver. Where'd the silver go? Man, a silver here would be so nice. Um, but yeah, you don't actually have that here. That's kind of funny. 
You got a gold instead. Um, still, like, changing up the move order, there might be other possibilities. So, back here, if you take the lance first, instead of going into the sequence and then taking the lance, like, um, here it's Gota's move. But here, uh, I'm going to remove the pawn advance because that's just a dumb nothing move. But, like, here, it's also Gota's move. Yeah, they're threatening the bishop, but they're threatening that anyway. And if they take, that takes this further away from your king, and maybe that's fine. So if you take this first, well, I guess this also throws on this threat, doesn't it? So this really puts the opponent on the uh, back of their feet. They're having to come up with something here. This is probably fine here. Uh, I guess, but oh, and I guess that removes the bishop takes possibility or the silver drop possibility. Wait, no, but you have a different silver drop here. So that's not it. So why did this not happen? Is it something like that? Like, both players are pretty resourceful and crafty. Um, there must have been some reason this wasn't played. I just can't... What is it? Um, plus, they're kind of short of pieces here, too, right? So you just, like, drop another rook out here? Uh, this is not the easiest thing to deal with. Maybe the idea after taking the lance is, well, okay, they'd intended to play this the whole time to cut off the bishop. And they play it now, or maybe they played up here. I don't know. Uh, this goes somewhere. And maybe this is what they've been intending the entire time. But... Again, they're having to react to the... Oh, actually, not even there. Um, let's do the same thing. I'm threatening this. So, the lance drop here is not super exciting either. I would want to drop the lance here, but I'm concerned like some sack might actually just win the game or something. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh... I mean, it's more normal to drop a lance on the back rank, but tactically, that's not the greatest thing here. It might work out, but, like, here, they're really having to scramble. They probably have to drop something like this and pray that this doesn't fall apart to, like, pawn drops on the front. Well, I guess they got this covered. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Like, if you're planning to do... Dragon takes Lance anyway. Throwing that in first, while the hand is mostly empty, and while you're still threatening other stuff. Or maybe you threaten to take the dragon here, and then like the horse follows up, because it then threatens this point. I don't know. There's a lot of ways to do this. This seems more flexible than dropping the silver first and getting kicked around. Then having to sack another piece, like, and then take it here. It just seems like something happened inefficiently there. Uh, this promotes. <laughs> uh, does that mate? Like, I like the spirit of the move. I don't know if it's accurate. Um. Hmm. So because of the two pawns, the Nifu rule, it's not possible for Senta to like, drop pawns on this column that already has pawn on it. Likewise, Gota can't do the same thing. But um, this rule tends to give way to certain kinds of attacks. Um, so yeah, you could sack here to try to open this up. But I don't know that you need to. Uh, I guess you don't want to give away a silver, because a silver on the back rank could suck. Um, how do you attack here? I mean, I guess maybe the sack is best. 
I have a hard time. But, well, okay, actually. I guess since you're threatening to take the bishop and then... Well, you don't have a rook to drop. I don't know what's going on here. The game gets complicated very quickly. I mean, this is super aggressive, but... Oh, wow, that's even more aggressive. What the heck? Both players are seeing something that I'm not. Okay, yeah, that uh, definitely wins a tempo. Um, hang on. Did this actually mate? Okay, yeah, that's mating. Because if that didn't win, then I was about to ask, well, if that fails, um, might something like sacking the rook be better? But no, that succeeded, so there's no need for me to criticize here. Um, but since that attack is so strong, like, well, Santa can't really run away either, because there's so many attacking pieces. So actually, yeah, that's this is what I missed. This is the brilliancy that I just did not see coming at all. But that makes sense. Um, so <laughs> that all said, um, yeah, we've given the dragon to the opponent who smashed our king with that same dragon. Um, I don't really know without the dragon what happens here. There's, it, there might be something really com sophisticated or something even simple that I'm just blind to. Um, but. In, hmm. you might have to spend one turn preparing this attack before it breaks through decisively. I don't know how you would, but um, with this king threatening to escape here, like if you could seal off the escape and then have the magic piece to just smash this open, that'd be that'd be a way to go. But I don't know how you do that with this combination. You don't have a silver, you don't have a bishop. You have a bishop, but it's down here. So you basically don't have it. Um, okay. I don't... Oh, right. So anyway. Yeah. Here, the silver was dropped. I guess you didn't have a piece other than silver, or you had a knight, you had four pawns, but the pawns could be fought off by the silver. This, um, and the knight doesn't have an easy access either. So that's why you exchange the silver, and later you needed a silver to continue this, and you just didn't have it. That's unfortunate. Um, oh wait, this point is loose. I think Lily remarked about this too, that like a knight drop could maybe threaten to do something. It's not easy. Um, but yeah, this is resourceful. And this dragon sack was optimistic and just didn't quite work the way they hoped. Um, yeah, since they don't have a knight to support this either, this is pretty rough. So this 5-5 uh, five, five silver has gone uncontested, right? How long has that silver been in the center? Ever since this point, that silver's been here. Ever since this retreat. And this retreat existed to try to win a bishop for a silver. And it happened. And Senta got their material. But... um. Yeah, this silver ended up just being, like, such a monster here. Because for one, two, three, four... Oh, I'm sorry, no, it did go... No, that's a bishop, not a rook. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten... Like, for many turns in a row, this went uncontested in any way, shape, or form. And now it's too late, basically, to challenge it, because now it's threatening to invade with the rest of the pieces invading. Had... 
I don't know how you even would have kicked it earlier. Um, like, if this knight weren't blocking, you could, like, try to attack it this way. It wouldn't be successful, because your bishop would get blocked by something, but you can attack this with the pawn, or I don't know. So, anyway, the silver was just a monster. Sent to sax the house, trying to mate, and then realizes the futility of their effort. Go to find some mates swiftly thereafter. Uh, yeah, okay, they need more pieces, but it's nothing they can't solve. You know, I'm amused by this little thing. Go to, um, is this a mating net? It's gotta be, because every moves check. Uh, yeah, there's something in this tradition of teaching the game where to emphasize like checkmates by series of check it's a great thing because it simplifies what you have to look at meanwhile i'm just like relaxing uh and thinking hey you know this game would be a lot easier if i had a bishop two modes of thought um sometimes this mode of thought backfires pretty heavily so if you can figure out that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, move checkmate. If you can figure that out, great. Um, I'm just slightly amused that went through all this beautiful stuff here and did find a good mate. Um, like earlier, I was suggesting if we're looking for a mate, I would have been looking this way for it, but. This probably doesn't work. They probably both did look at this already and concluded that it doesn't work. I'm stumped as to how this doesn't work. Can we not take that? Like, what's the shot here? I don't understand. I guess we've only got one general of each type. Um... Do both of these silver drops, mate? Okay, well, uh, I think both variations lead to mate. So, like, we drop here, they try to run away, we mate this way. Um, and yeah, if they, obviously, if they run away this way, you have a gold drop here, too. If the king runs up, um, then this is also mate. That's like a five move variation. Um, I found this other thing later, which is pretty cool. And it's pretty spooky to give up the rook for unforeseen consequences. Like, yeah, that's really spooky to give that up. Um, it's from that perspective, I probably just would have taken this. But anyway. They found it, and that's what matters. Um, and what they found was quite beautiful, actually. It's not right for me to detract from it, and we hopefully can all learn something from this. Um, yeah, this. I guess the order of this these captures is not so relevant because this promotion. Um, there's not a drop that checks that mates here. So the only mate would already be the same thing. It would transpose. So, because there's no need to go too deep into that. And this bishop drop is really crafty, too. Because without that, this doesn't work. <laughs> or it's at least much, much harder to pull off. Um, yeah, I'm going to trust the players to solve this properly. Anyway, so what are the key takeaways from this whole analysis? Um, one, you can play Shogi without having memorized crazy, stupid levels of theory. You can play kind of free-spirited and just have a strong tactical alertness. Two... 
if you don't take the initiative somehow, and it's not always easy to take, and you sometimes have to give up material to take it, um, if you don't, your opponent will find a way to eventually take the initiative, and you'll be reacting rather than forcing them to react. Um, three, like, yeah, if you haven't built a really solid castle like Gota's built, you're going to have to defend a lot uh, later. So spending a little time building a strong castle can reap tremendous benefits. And I guess four, just be careful about blocking your pieces. It's hard to find ways to attack and not be vulnerable. But um, that's the challenge. And we play this game to enjoy the challenge and learn from it. So nicely played by both players, and best of luck to everyone uh, throughout the remainder of this tournament. Have a good day.